Hello, and in this video, I will be talking to you about expanding batteries in iPods. I'll be running through why these batteries are expanding in these iPods and what you can do for the future to try and at least prevent this from happening to your iPod. But first of all, I'll be running through some of the iPods that I have in my personal collection. So I've got a classic, I've got a shuffle, a few nanos, and this first generation iPod shuffle. Um, here we have an original Apple iPod Classic second generation. This is from 2002. It's the one that has the Firewire connection and the battery still lasts a good five hours in this iPod. I've opened it up to change the hard drive and the battery is the original battery, has not expanded and it still does last a good few hours of playback. Um, here we have some nanos. Uh, I believe that expanding batteries are more commonly in nanos and some shuffles compared to the I Apple iPod Classics. This, I believe, is because in an iPod Classic, there is so much room for batteries to expand that if they do expand, you will, you will notice much more later than you will notice with a nano or a shuffle. Now, as you can see, I have an iPod Nano fourth generation here. And as you can see, these are so thin and so light that to cram so much technology in such a little device, I just think it's absolutely amazing. But obviously this has some drawbacks because as you can see, this iPod is starting to expand its battery. But you may ask, how does this happen? Well, the battery sits below the display and over time the battery expands, chemical gases build up in the battery. And then the battery, once it expands, it pushes against the LCD and then the LCD pushes against the glass and it creates this LCD to glass contact, which almost looks like the iPod is water damaged, but it's not because if I press on it, you can hear it popping and you can see that the display uh, dot in the middle is getting bigger. Um, this usually happens because an iPod has been sitting for such a long time. Let's say an iPod has sat for 10 years and then you take it out and then you decide to use it, put it on charge. You might stick it on a higher amp charger and then the iPod is not designed for that type of charger uh, because, for example, it's a small nano, it only accepts up to one amp. And then that additional power might distress the battery, it might put additional power into the battery, which might cause the battery to overreact, the, the battery will expand. And this is because the battery has not had any cycles in that 10 year period. Uh, things inside the battery settle, the chemicals settle, and then all of a sudden you decide to charge it, and then the chemical composition reacts, and then the battery starts charging, it starts charging too quickly, it starts charging at a different current than it's used to, and then that's how the battery expands through that chemical composition. Gases build up, and it's almost like an overreaction to the battery. So to prevent this, in my opinion, what you can do is periodically take your iPod out, charge it, use it. I wouldn't do this every day because it will wear out the battery faster. Do it every month, every couple of months or so. Take it out, take it for a full charge, discharge the battery, put it on charge again, listen to music if you're thinking of actually collecting these types of iPods. So we talked about the Nano fourth generation. Now we will be talking about the Nano third generation. Now this expands in a different way. This has got a flat back. One way that you can tell is you place it on a flat surface and rock it. As you can see, the iPod starts to rock. And in here by the charging connector, you can see that I can actually put my fingernail in there, which means that I can, I can notice that the battery is expanded. That is meant to be flush with the case and not rocking on a flat surface. The Nano first generation, for example, has this battery around here. And once it starts expanding, it will push against the case. You will see the case bulging and you will notice that uh, when this happens, your iPod might get warm when charging. Uh, you might hear popping noises because the case is expanding. Uh, your iPod might charge faster than usual. It might discharge faster than usual and you might get problems with the click wheel. The click wheel might not click properly or it might click in a different place or it might not just work at all. In absolute worst case scenarios, which I will show you in a minute, you might get iPods that actually do crack their displays when uh, the battery expands. 
So here I have an iPod Nano 5th generation. As you can see, this one has actually expanded its battery to the point where it actually cracked the inner display. And we'll be soon pushing the display out along with the glass. Uh, that means that this iPod is not currently stable anymore. And in my opinion, it's uneconomical to repair. That is an iPod Nano 5th generation. And what I would suggest with that is just to recycle it properly and just to buy another iPod really if you just want to collect them. If you want to replace the battery in that sort of iPod then that operation will be extremely difficult because everything is so compact that once you try to open the iPod and slide the components out you might risk piercing the battery which could cause a small fire. Um, sometimes with iPods, so I've got this Nano here, um, Sometimes the batteries don't expand on them, but they completely go dead. So I've put this one on charge, and then once you take it out, the battery just completely dies. Now in this situation, because the battery has not expanded in any way, you could technically replace the battery in this iPod, but it will be very difficult because you'll need a soldering iron, and batteries for these are quite hard to find these days. With iPod shuffles, uh, I've noticed that the second generation iPod Shuffle tends to expand more than the first generation iPod Shuffle. One way you can tell is the casing gets bulgy, the buttons get very hard to click, and your iPod gets very warm when charging. When you charge one of these, I highly recommend using the original charger that came with it. If you still don't have it, you can try and buy one, because if you use a third party charger, then you may risk damaging the battery through charging because it's not the appropriate type of cable and not the appropriate type of current runs through it. With these, these are very rare when they expand. These usually just completely stop working when the battery fails, but I've seen one or two of these that expand. They push against the controls, they get very warm and they become very unstable. iTunes doesn't recognize them or it starts to recognize them and then iTunes decides to kick the iPod out because the battery can't sustain the power, um, maybe because your USB port doesn't have enough power to just feed the iPod, there's no battery to help it. Um, with newer Nanos, such as this one, which is a 6th gen, or a Nano 7th gen, these are too new to actually have a look at, because these are still relatively new compared to the other ones, and I've personally never ever seen a battery expand in a Nano 6th gen, or 7th gen, correct me if I'm wrong. This doesn't just happen to iPods, unfortunately. Here, I have a iPad first generation with 3G. Um, I've actually been using this as a big iPod touch because it's so convenient to play music out of your iTunes library if you have that. Uh, this has actually expanded so bad that I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's pushing against the display and this has completely failed. This no longer works. You plug it in, uh, it brings the Apple logo and then it shuts off. So as you can see, it's pushing against the display. The display is raising up and this iPad is actually thicker than usual. Another way that you can tell that your battery is expanding is that uh, you might smell something like nail varnish. Uh, more commonly around ports so you might smell nail varnish around here around the headphone jack uh, or around the dock connector or the speakers if you do smell nail varnish and that's an indication that the battery is losing gases it's unstable and you know personally I would recycle that device before it could get worse or replace it if you can in this iPad situation then you technically can replace it uh, I've looked at tutorials and it's actually quite easy, but since the device is not worth that much, I'll just buy another one because the batteries are almost just as much as the new ones for this iPad. So yeah, that concludes this video. Um, I'm sure there's many of you out there who have got this experience. And my conclusion is just periodically take the iPods out, put them on charge, use them uh, just so you can decelerate this process of your battery expanding and potentially thrown out good devices. 
Um, thank you for watching this video.